Hello everybody, in this video we're going to simulate a warped version of the Sorting Hat. Alright, let's get going. So this is what the Sorting Hat looks like. This is the scene from the Harry Potter film. You see Harry's like saying all this stuff, trying to influence the Sorting Hat. The Sorting Hat picks the dorm for Harry to go into, picks Gryffindor, and everybody's happy. Our Sorting Hat is going to pretend to listen, but really ignore everything you say. And it's not picking for any good reason, it's randomly picking you a house. That's why I say it's a warped version of the Sorting Hat. The Sorting Hat, if I run it enough times, it will pick every hat at least once. I'm gonna go over the lab here. If you feel like you can do it already, just skip ahead to the next section. You've seen this, so I'm gonna zoom through it. This is the video link, this is the program run. I'm gonna add this program into my replit. I'm gonna click add file, copy and paste that name in, change your name here to my name, make sure there's no spaces. We're gonna click the three dots and show hidden files. We're gonna edit the replit.file. We're gonna edit entry point so it runs this file. You see here, I'm actually screwing up. Oops, somehow I did something wrong. So what did I do? I go back, I realize I typed .py twice, and when I fix that, my file is gonna jump to the top, and this test line that's in my file will now run. All right, so now that I'm at the right file, I'm gonna copy and paste the starter code into my REPL, and here we go. So first thing is I'm gonna minimize this window on the left with the files. Since I know I'm running the right file, I don't need to look at it anymore. And this will give me some more room for my code. All right, step one, create a list of five houses. So you remember how to do this, list equals the bracket item, and then you separate the items by commas. So here we go, I have houses equal to the four regular houses, plus an additional one since in our universe, Hogwarts has expanded. Next up, we're going to have the hat ask the user a question to influence the hat. Remember we've done this before, variables equal to input, parentheses, with a question inside. In Harry's universe, the hat actually listens. In our universe, the hat is going to completely ignore the person. So I could actually write this in two ways. In the way that we've learned, we do question equals to input with a question, and that saves the answer to a question. I could also not save it to a variable. You would almost never actually do this, because most of the time you care what the user answers. But this time I don't care, so I could throw away the user's answer. Next up, I need to pick a random house from the houses and print out the house. So the first step here, I need to generate a random number. How do I do that? We've done it before, we import random. These, if you remember, always go at the top for organizational reasons. If my code goes wrong, I always know that the imports are at the top. And then after that, we learned about random.randint. We're going to do variable is equal to random.randint with the parentheses. And inside, I have two numbers for my ranges. The first number is the bottom of the range, and the second number is the top of the range. So what is the bottom of my range? Well, we want, it, we want the bottom of the range to be here. And remember, lists start with zero. So the bottom of my range is zero. Well, what about the top of my range? My first thought is that the top of my range is 5 because there are 5 items in my list. But that thought would be wrong. Remember, lists start with 0. So for the top end of my range, the number I want is 4. But now I have another problem. And that is that this number will not work if Hogwarts expands. Remember, in this universe, Hogwarts is an expansion mode. So for example, if I add the House of Canada, and I'm totally making that up, then this code is going to be broken. It's not going to ever pick the House of Canada because the random number will never be 5. So to get around this, I'm going to use the len function, which you used before. And how do I do that? Its variable is equal to len parentheses of a list or a string inside. And remember, you're allowed to use variables inside the random.randint, which you did with one of the labs. So I'm going to calculate the length of my list. Length equals len houses. I'm going to use that as part of my upper range inside of where I'm calculating my random number. But let's print this out. When I print out the length of houses right now, I get 6. So this is a common thing to kind of mess up. Length works as humans do, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And lists count as computers do, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So just as with the pick a door program that you wrote before, you need to make an adjustment from the human world to the computer world. And that adjustment is to subtract 1 from the length. You've already done this concept before, so hopefully that's not too strange for you. Next, I need to print out the house. So to get the house, remember, to access items from list, it's item equals the list, square brackets, and then the index. So here I've made the variable house. House is equal to houses bracket number. House singular is equal to houses plural bracket number. And using singular and plural helps you remember whether you're talking about the single item or whether you're talking about the list. Finally, I'm just going to print it out. You could print it out either with concatenation or with F strings. I showed them both here, and then we're good. So I'm going to test it. I need to test this a lot of times. I need to be sure that every single house is accounted for. So Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, Canada. So that's the last one. 
and Gryffindor. And that tells me that my range for numbers is good. So now just to show how it's done, I'm gonna auto grade the lab. I'm gonna take this bar and slide it to the right, which will show me the file names. I'll click the three dots next to my file and select download. I'll click save. There I go. I'm gonna to go to the website for the autograder. The link is https videos autograderhorokuappcom Link is in the description below. I'm gonna select the correct lab. I'm gonna slide it in. Click submit for autograding and there's my score, 49 out of 50. I have a pet aid error. I'm sure if you have a pet aid error that you're gonna be able to fix that, so I'm not gonna go over it now. Okay, so here are the common mistakes that people make in this lab, or really any lab with lists. The first is that they forget. Lists start with zero. So they pick their random number and they say the first item is one. If I do that, I will never get the first item in the list, which in this case happens to be Gryffindor. To get that first item, I need the random number to be between zero and three. Right now it's between one and three. So that's the first error, to mess up the lower end of the range. The second error is to mess up the upper end of the range. So what folks do is they write length as the upper bound of my random number. But length works in human terms, meaning that the length of this list will come out not as three, but as four. So that gives me a random number between zero and four. And if the random number happens to be four, printing out the list bracket four gives me an error because it does not exist it's outside of the list. And the last thing people do is not use good variable names. They'll do stuff like print out houses instead of house, They'll call their number variable numbers instead of number. Remember, you want your variable names to describe what the variables are. And a good rule of thumb is to use plural variable names when you're talking about lists, because lists are plural, and singular for everything else. And in this way, your knowledge of the English language can help you understand your code. Lastly, I just want to put some context into the last three labs you've done. So in the pick a door one, it's basically pick an item using variables. We did that lab one more time, pick an item, but this time we did it with lists. And with this Hogwarts lab, we're basically doing the exact same lab, except we're not giving you a choice, we're picking a random item. So these are all basically the same lab with one change in between. And developing this recognition is something that you wanna have in computer science. Since all the time, you're gonna be basically writing the same code you wrote before, but changing one or two little things, and you don't wanna have to start over from scratch every single time. The second is a concept you will use if you take the APCSP exam, and that is to understand how this code that you've just written is better than the code you would have written if you had used individual variables. So on the left, I have the code with variables, individual variables, and on the right, I have the code with lists. And hopefully you can see the code with lists is more readable because it's shorter. You don't have this giant if, elif, elif, elif. And it's a lot easier to maintain. So if Hogwarts expands to 1 million houses, I have to make 2 million lines of code if I use individual variables of elifs. But on the right, I only have to change the houses and everything else stays exactly the same. You're gonna to need to code and write about an example of where lists are better than individual variables and picking a random item from a list qualifies. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.